so, Lynette, how would you, we'll, we'll do it together. Okay. How, and you guys can coach us, right? If we want to begin to define ourselves as heroines in an exotica, an erotica, right? How do you, what do you, what do you, what were the times where you remember your, where your sexiest self? I think it, like I really associate it with that power when I was attracting people. So when people would notice me or, you know, if I'm being very literal, when my tits were out, <laughs> those kind of things, right? When those are the things that are going to, what I assumed would attract men. Oh, so I, that's kind of when I felt my most powerful, <laughs> which would then lead me to feel the most confident in my body. Yes. Right? So when you were able to have, so your character begins with an acceptance and a knowing of where she's sexy. Mm -hmm. So it could be, I could see the whole erotica beginning as I'm preparing for the date and I'm looking at myself in the mirror, but I'm not doing the exercise of how do I accept, how do I accept? It's like, yeah, girl, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, wait till he sees it from this angle. I might even bend over and say, can you see that? What does that look like? I could see myself wanting to build that into my story because, but I'm wondering for me personally, I'm used to somebody like looking at me and so I, I really struggle with how to identify my voice because my performance of sexiness comes from society and what I think I'm supposed to do to look sexy. Yeah. How do I break through that? Yeah, I remember when I started Savage Desire. So when I started Savage Desires, which is my company, I started Savage Desire selling dildos. Okay. Right? Did you have how-tos? <laughs> And to say all of that say is, and the reason why I started it is because that's the only thing that could make me have an orgasm. I didn't know orgasm out of having a, a vibrator. Okay. Exactly. A vibrator. But to say all of that is to say is, I, because society said, because I'm selling vibrators, this is how I'm supposed to dress. The tits out, being sexy, wearing all of these things, right? That's how I would yeah. sell a vibrator or how I would uh, attract, all right? Yeah. Or I would attract a man. Mm -hmm. But then I start getting into my head that people are um, judging me because I'm selling vibrators anyways. And that probably I'm, a, 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 you know, I sleep with everybody that has a dick, right? But yeah. as the work becomes, comes around, my most sexiest is dressing like this. Mm. And I find in that because of how I start feeling about myself and this is how I'm showing up and just... Just having clothes on my body is like one of the biggest turn on for me because now who's, who, who am I empowering? I'm the most person that's empowering me. And I am attracting even more mm -hmm. qualified, more men mm -hmm. this way because, and it's not, our clothes Are we doesn't hold that. high value no, situation? We're not talking about high value. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm not, no, I'm not even talking about high value, man. I'm just saying. Our clothes is not what defined us. What shows up more is what we we're talking about earlier is confidence yeah. and how you're representing yourself or how you're showing up. Because at one point, society said, Donna Savage, you're selling sick toys, show some tits, wear a short skirt, wear a six inches heel. But then we, I had to overcome that because that was not me. This is society. Society is telling me this is how I have to show up. Yeah, well, society tells me that too, but I love me wearing some heels, and I like when it's cropped up to the side. I like when it looks like that. Like, I get why he likes it, because I see it and I'm like, that looks good. And then there's nothing wrong, and I'm not saying anything. Oh, please, girl, I wear my six inch heels on my chair. Oh, hell yes. I know. This is one of my shortest heels, but to say all of that is to say that it's not our clothes. The confidence. It's the confidence. Yeah. It's, you know, it's the confidence that you come with. Because me and you could go somewhere else, um, LA, and we're in the same thing, but you're coming in more confident, the smile, the way you look. It's just your freaking presence. And then remember, you know, we're in the same thing, but then I'm coming in your selection and like, who? Right. The vibration. It's the vibration. I remember when I was young, I had a girlfriend. She's huge. And my sister and I were dancing, and the guy, she was in, she was here, my sister and I were here, we're smaller, because she had this confidence in her eyes and she's just staring at the guys and she's just staring at him. The guy literally oh, came, <laughs> just a side, boom. Okay, boom. So <laughs> <laughs> nah, when, she, when she said the whole making eye contact, yes. I was telling him the story about this one fluffy girl that I met at the club and it was the same thing, and, you know, she had her friend there and that was, that was the, Cliche, typical, good-looking woman, but the way she looked at me, I'm like, mm. 
Yeah, you gonna do me right. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. gonna do me right. Yeah, push, push your hands high. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Leishif, what do we do with this idea that we are writing this character with confidence, who accepts who she is? How do we then, what do we do next? Now, now after that, now basically the situation that you want to find yourself in. Okay? Mm. So if you want to, um, most of the time, when you create a character like that, I say, I suggest role play. Role play. You know, uh, you, uh, I, I remember watching uh, this uh, movie with Denzel Washington at <laughs> yes. the time. Yes. Um, him and Sanaa Lathan. He's oh, a yeah. chief of police. She called the police saying that someone broke into her house. He comes in. Oh, yes. And he asked her, oh, so what did he look like? She said, he kind of looked like you. He was like, oh, so he was good looking. She's like, no, not really. <laughs> But, you know, they play they along. They played, they played And then she, he asked her, what did he do? And she said, oh, he, uh, he grabbed me by the neck and he just puts his hand on her neck and then, you know, it goes on and now it gets into the sexual aspect of it. But the narrative started off with distress, but it was distress to get him to come over, you know? Yes. So how do you get to come, how do you get to be introduced into the scene in whether it's in the bedroom, at the bar, in the car, wherever you want the action to take place. Lynette, I see you daydreaming over there. <laughs> Come back to a past life. <laughs> Why does it have to be past life? Oh, it could be you, now. I, absolutely. It could definitely be now. My, my daydreaming is going back to that past oh. life that I had <laughs> before I did the work. The real, the real. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but isn't that where fantasies come in as well? Like, because you remember you were talking about um, memory yeah. but fantasies too can feel real mm -hmm. right yeah. oh yeah most definitely mm -hmm. yeah I, I enjoy oh i enjoy the idea of uh, uh, of fantasies in terms of and i think some people get to get a misconstrued in terms of you know what what fantasies are they, they... well i'm glad you said that because dr mm -hmm. g maybe you can go back this is a great opportunity to make mm -hmm. that distinction between fetish and kink and the preference and phobias. Yeah. Can you can you tease some of those apart? So when we're looking at fetish versus kink, um, usually, and I, I put a post about that. Uh, just imagine yourself self stimulating, right, or solo sex, masturbating, right, and you hear your neighbors going at it, and then it turns you on. That right there in itself is a kink. Uh, now keep that example in mind. Um, now, if you needed to look at something or read something in order to turn you on, then that would be a fetish. Now, I'm not talking about all the, the great things. There's like 20 plus ways of kink and all these other fetishes and stuff like that. But I, I, rarely do we talk about how do we get to a point where we're understanding the difference between fetish and kink. So typically, uh, if I could try to simplify a definition between the two, where we're talking about something that's kink, it's really just something that's added to uh, something that you're already doing, like the situation with solo sex and you hear somebody. So somebody else is hearing that sex is added onto the experience and it's pleasurable. That's a kink. But a fetish, you needing to look at someone's feet or you needing to look at someone having sex on a video a certain kind of way uh, to arouse you. Uh, that is uh, kind of a simplified difference uh, in the definition between the fetish and the kink. So. A kink is really, you know, something that you can add on to it, right, that you're already doing and enjoying. Whatever it is, there's so many levels to kink. And it's up to the person to find it, to take that venture, uh, adventure, and, 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 and see what it is. But when we're talking about a fetish, which is also still an adventure, you know, you pretty much have this thing that really starts to arouse you. And then you can do all these other actions and fun things in bed or outside of the bed, which I think people need to start doing is having more sex outside of the bed. But anyway. Yes, no, preach, preach, I'm, preach. I'm here yeah. for it. We're here for it. <laughs> um, I think about the fact that I'm, I think, I'm, I know I'm sapio uh, sexual and this understanding, but I don't know if that falls into what you're describing because it's a, it's a mental stimulation that, but I require it because I realize, I used to accept it no more charity for me. This is like, this is like, if I am not getting the stimulation and arousal I want, you're not getting any because no, you have to work for that. Yeah, no, I've, I've denied myself that pleasure for too long and I want to be stimulated by that. 
So what is that? Is it just a preference? It could be a number of things. And you know, that takes a, a, a bigger conversation to have. Uh, you know, I think it would be unfortunate and unfair for me to define who you are within just an hour. But I wanna say, just continue to take that journey. And everybody at some point needs to have it warmed up. You know, that doesn't mean that, oh, that's my fetish or this is a kink. We just have to understand what that journey looks like and, and have fun with it. Don't pigeonhole yourself into, this is, this is my fetish and this is what it is. And so I, the best thing I could tell you is, first of all, I love you. I love you sharing this, this experience, but continue to experience it until we can figure out and hash out and flesh out what this I is. I like it. Is. I love it. I love it. I, you know, you're right to say that it, it requires a larger conversation. Um, but I think this conversation has been really enlightening for me personally. Um, and I hope for all of you also in terms of like, even, I didn't realize that you guys were going to be able to speak from the perspective of being a larger man. Um, I didn't even think about that. I just, I knew that you have both possibly have been with a, a larger woman and that was what I was going to ask you. But then it just occurred to me as we sat here that, hold on a second, why are we making this about just fluffy girls when there are fluffy men out there mm -hmm. that are also having an experience? Are you okay? Hello, oh, hello, no, Dr. Was, G, fluffy was, man. My, <laughs> my little Jesus with me. Yes, I agree. I okay, agree. yeah, bring it on, bring it on. I'm, I, I'm here for that too. Um, I'm just really grateful. So I, I want to thank each of you. And if, if you, know, you want to wrap up with your final points and who you are and how they get in touch with you on social media, we can start with you, Donna. All right. So um, social media, you know what? As I always said, just Google Donna Savage. <laughs> you know, um, it's idea, it, 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 you know, that's basically it. And I'm a well-being sensuality coach or Instagram, Savage Desires 69. No, I changed it. I changed it. Too bad. Yeah, Savage, Savage Desires, Desires 69. Savage Desires DS. <laughs> That's going to be the name of my erotica. There you go. Savage Desires 69. Or on YouTube, um, <laughs> talk with Savage Desires. Like, yeah, so I'm kind of out there when it comes to certain things. So, yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Big Lou, how do we find you? B I G L U 91. That's my official name, Big Lou 91. Um, I'm your lyrically comical decompression from depression. Hey. Okay. okay. <laughs> and Robert? Um, so, uh, Mr. Mlolo on Instagram, look for Mr. Mlolo on, um, actually Robert Mlolo, the author on Facebook, Mr. Underscore Mlolo on Twitter. Um, we can also find Mr. Late Shift, um, on Instagram and on Twitter as well. Actually, also on Facebook. Um, <laughs> and, uh, wow, there's a lot going on here. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh yeah, I think, uh, you know what, that whole Savage Desire 69, I'm thinking I'm going to have to make some calls after this. Okay. <laughs> I'm here for all of this. This has been a good day. This is, no, no it's inspiring. It's inspiring. It's, inspiring. it's very inspiring. Savage this is Desire what she does. This is what she does. It's savage. Okay, Lynette. You can find me at Matriarch um, in the Making on Instagram. Matriarch in the Making. I love it. Okay. And Dr. G, how do we find you? Yes, thank you for asking. Um, uh, at my website, www.kayatoday.com. That's C-A-Y-A today.com. Uh, my Instagram handle is Boris underscore Chestnut or Come As You Are 2020. Uh, also on Facebook, Boris Chestnut. And you can also find me at uh, Kaya on Facebook or my sex event site is Compassion. You can find that on Facebook. Uh, and on IG is Compassion1981. Amazing. Do you have any last thoughts? In, to cons I, although I think you did a really good job of, of what you said earlier, but is there any last thoughts? Uh, I, I really like to focus on uh, the fluffy size with women, and but also want to introduce the idea of, you know, the dad bod situation. We are, you know, it usually it used to be the that uncomfortable guys that Love it. Yes. work out. <laughs> but if you look at like Savage Fenty and Rihanna, she, she's had that guys that are models and dad bods with confidence now. So, you know, with women, there are also men that are out there that, you know, are trying to flaunt it in, in sexy ways instead of hiding it under a shirt now. So there is a little bit of confidence from the male's perspective, uh, male's perspective as well. Yeah, it would be nice to see how men flip it. We're, we're pretty lucky as women. We can find a lot of ways to feel sexy and beautiful. 
So um, <laughs> let's, let's think of some things for the fluffy men of the world. I hope we've all learned something about the world of the fluffy plus size woman and man. If you want to reach us, DM us on Instagram at Fiva TV. Someone wise once told me that the best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. Sexual education and relational wellness is that elephant. So whatever you need to do to make sex and relationships great, do that. We'll see you next time on Late Night Cocktails. Yeah.